what is money? And the answer which came from uh, the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, is that money in Islam is either gold and silver coins or when gold and silver are in short supply, then money in Islam is uh, articles of, or commodities of food consumption which have a shelf life and which are in abundant supply in the market. And in the time of the Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, they use wheat, they use barley, they use dates, they use salt. And by analogy, I mentioned you can use rice, you can use sugar, etc. What is common to all of these money, different forms of money, is that they all have intrinsic value. The value of the money is created by Allah, the Lord God, the one God, and the value of the money is inside the money. Um, I mentioned what's the Christian view. If the Christian does not know, then uh, please don't mind if I teach you your religion. Jesus, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And I mentioned to you what is money for Jesus. When he comes back, as he is coming back, what will be the money that he will use? He's going to rule the world. So don't tell me if you're going to rule the world when you come back, you will have no contact with money. Wake up, please. When Jesus comes back, what will money be? Is that not a subject that interests you? He went into the temple and he found the money lenders, the money changers ripping off the people. What happened? I mentioned to you, the Roman government was minting gold and silver coins with the emperor's head on it, which is a graven image which is prohibited. Does a Christian not know that? That graven images are prohibited? Do I have to remind you of that, my Christian brother and sister? And um, because this was money was, was, was haram, was illegal because you had a graven image on it, the temple in Jerusalem was minting its own money. What money was the temple in Jerusalem minting? Was it US dollars or euros? Will you not wake up? The temple in Jerusalem was minting gold and silver coins. Do I have to remind you of that? You have to excuse my frustration. I'm 75 years of age and I see so many people in the world today with no knowledge of what is money. None. The temple minted its own gold and silver coins with no graven images. And the money changers were ripping off the people when they changed their Roman money for temple money. So money in Christianity, money that Jesus recognized, that money that Jesus used was gold and silver coins. This is money. And in the last lecture we pointed out that this money always has intrinsic value. What we did not do and what we're now going to do in the few minutes we have left is to now turn to the Quran and ask the question, what is money in the Quran? Is the Muslim interested in that question? I speak to my Muslim brothers and sisters and I ask you, are you interested in getting the answer? If you say you are a people who follow Quran and Sunnah, that you are following the religion, well then am I allowed to tell you what is money in the Quran? Will you listen to me? Please forgive me. I am frustrated because mine has been a voice crying in the wilderness for 20 years now. They will not listen to me, they ban me, they say I'm a terrorist, they do all kinds of things. 
They locked the doors of the masjid to me in this country once upon a time. What is money in the Quran? May I teach you? In the Quran, Allah has the word dinar. Dinar, it is in the Quran. And what is a dinar in the Quran? It is money, it is a gold coin. Do you want to know more than that? That is money in the Quran, your Quran. Not USD and euros and tiki dollars, a gold coin, the dinar. And in the Quran there is dirham, the word dirham is in the Quran. And the dirham is a silver coin, yes, this is in the Quran. I can quote the verses for you, but we don't have the time. But you can do your homework and go in the Quran and find the word dinar. And go in the Quran and find the word dirham, a gold coin and a silver coin. Is that all that there is in the Quran? No, there's more. Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran is the surah or chapter par excellence of the end time. And in this surah there is the story of the young man who fled in the cave. Oh, you know the story. And they slept for three a hundred years. And at the end of three hundred years, Allah woke them up. The Christians have the same story that we have in the Quran. The Jews have it also. It's not unique to the Quran. The sleepers of the cave. And after three hundred years, these young men who had faith in God Almighty and who therefore saw with the internal eye as well, they're hungry. So they sent one of them to go and buy some food and they gave him some money. And this money would be adequate to buy some food. I ask you, what kind of money would it be that could buy some food 300 years ago and 300 years later it could still buy the food? Couldn't be titty dollars, no? When I was a child, I went with my father to the market, to Chagona's market, and I saw my father buying a hundred oranges for one dollar with my own eyes. Today, one dollar cannot even buy one orange. So it couldn't be this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money that the young men in the cave had. It had to be money which could store its value successfully. And that's gold and silver. A hundred years, two hundred years, a thousand years later, you could still use your gold and silver coins and it will still preserve the value. That's money in the Quran.